there's many of you that every once in a while reach out to me with a question and say, Brian, I've got an L4, L5 and or an L5 S1 disc bulge or disc herniation. What do I do? What do I do to fix it? How do these happen? For those that don't know, my name is Brian Carroll. I live in Jacksonville, Florida. I'm a McGill Method certified provider having power lifted for over 21 years and ending on a high note of being the first person to squat over 1300 pounds. I now work with people all over the world from both a virtual standpoint and in person here in Jacksonville, Florida with injury resilience and performance enhancement. I'm not giving you medical advice. For more information, go to powerrackstrength.com. Thank you so much. Enjoy this video. L5, S1, L4, L5 are the most common disc problems that I see. There's many of you that every once in a while reach out to me with the question and say, Brian, I've got an L4, L5 and or an L5, S1 disc bulge or disc herniation. What do I do? What do I do to fix it? How do these happen? It doesn't make sense because my foot hurts. It feels like I have plantar fasciitis. Uh, it doesn't make sense. Uh, my hamstring and my ass is on fire. That doesn't make sense. I think I have sciatica. I don't think it has anything to do with my L4, L5, L5S1 segments of the spine, which is the base of your spine. So we don't have a sacrum on here, but here's L5 and the sacrum will be just below. But this disc and the next one, it's the foundation of the spine. Sometimes we have a little bit of instability on those levels below. Right now we have instability at uh, L3, L4, a little bit of instability there, or L2, L3. And we have a little bit of, so we have what? Five, four, three, the three, four instability there. And that ends up being a stress concentration after a while. You see the micro movements and instability, okay? You can see the facets start grinding into extension there. Doesn't like it so much. Now going to the other dynamic disc model that I have here from Jerome Pryor. Great models, they're biofidelic. These are the best ones made in the entire world. Dynamic disc designs. What we have here is an L4 vertebra and an L5 vertebra. And we have the exiting nerve root here. We have an exiting nerve root on this side. So each side has a foramen with an exiting nerve root. Now on this side, we have a nice big L4, L5 juicy disc height, okay? That's a nice healthy disc height. It's, the nucleus is still intact and it's got its height. Well, what can happen over time from um, damage to the end plates that connect the vertebra and the disc um, to each other, the end plate of cartilage there, Sometimes it could you become damaged from compression or a fall. Then you get a little bit of the instability that I was talking about. It usually starts to the end plate, but you get some instability sometimes. The disc can bulge circumferentially around or just soften and flatten. And that's when you hear the phrase degenerative disc disease, so on and so forth. Looking for the answer to your sleepless nights, sore muscles, and better overall well-being? If so, Power Act Strength CBD has you covered. All of our products are made of CBD isolate and have 0% THC, meaning there are no worries of failing a drug test or the worry of feeling high. With Power Act Strength CBD, we offer a wide range of products and payment options to ensure you have the option that best fits your needs. Don't just take it from me. All of our reviews and client testimonials on our site speak for themselves. You can even get 20% off your order by using code YT1306 at checkout. Go to PowerXStrengthCBD.com to order now so you can get back to sleeping, recovering, lifting, feeling, and being better. But when the bolt, when the tire lets a little bit of air out, you start getting a little bit of instability, and then you can start getting stress concentrations, okay? Especially when you start losing disc height. Good juicy disc height there. Look at the alignment of the vertebra there and how it's stacked differently. The angle of the vertebra changes. Once you start to lose some of that nice, juicy disc height, and then what happens is the facets start to get overloaded. The pars start to get overloaded. You can get bone on bone collision, mechanical collision between the end plates and start getting arthritis and osteophytes there. And then it's a cascade, but check this out. This is a really cool disc herniation. This is actually an annular tear where the nucleus has worked its way through the annulus, the annulus fibrosis, which 
is woven collagen in three different types of collagen. And after a while, it can work its way through the cleft or the stress concentration, and then a little bit of compression, and then some bending, compression plus flexion, then you get a big herniation there or an annular tear with the, uh, a herniation with an annular tear. Then you have this nerve root that I moved out of the way. This is the exiting L4 nerve root, and it runs right there, and it can get trapped, it can get pinched. The cord right there, called the fecal sac, those nerves as well can get hit by a posterior disc herniation or a paracentral disc herniation. And then it doesn't just stop with the disc. After you lose that disc height, it starts looking like this. Then as you go into extension and compression, the facet joints, the facets that keep you in track and flexion and extension, these little um, articulations here, the set joint that helps you extend and it keeps you from going and too much flexion, they can start taking damage. They can start to create bone spurring and narrowing in the foramen. You can see here how they can grow and get enlarged. They can get full of water and actually uh, hold, hold water and become edemic. And uh, they can start growing towards that cord. So you can actually have a disc that gets settled. After a while, the disc pain goes away, you can plug, or it might get broke down by the body's natural inflammatory properties. That's where the pain comes from. It's inflammation. If you let it settle, that inflammation can actually break down that disc herniation or that annular, that nucleus material. It can dissolve it and break it down and chew it up basically. And sometimes people panic with the sequestered disc fragment, you know, on their spinal cord and it causes pain. But after a while, you leave it alone. The body's natural inflammatory response will just eat it up and dissolve it. Other times, if it's still intact and you have a disc herniation or a disc bulge, um, sometimes it can vacuum back in and kind of go back in. And that's why you see people doing tummy lying as talked about in back mechanics. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Remember, like, subscribe, share, click the notifications because we drop videos twice a week. We also have a live stream every Friday where I answer your questions. Click below to see the latest video that we uploaded. Also for our products, our CBD, our books that correspond with these videos, it's down in the description. For more information about all things Brian Carroll and Power Rack Strength, go to PowerRackStrength.com. You can book a consult both virtually and in person with me. Enjoy your week and thank you so much.